vectors in 3 space or R3. In this video, we will try to understand how to give direction for a vector in 3 space. And we will be understanding two terms and these are direction angles and direction cosines. Now, in R2, we could give direction with just one cosine, one direction, right? But in R3, we need three different directions. I'll explain you how. Let us consider a vector u, which is equals to ABC. So I will sketch this vector for you here. Thereby, you'll also understand how to sketch a vector in R3. So that is my XYZ plane, the R3 plane. And as we use right hand rule, we know this is the X side. And if you use your right hand, thumb pointing towards C, your fingers will curl from X to Y. So that is your Y, and the thumb will be pointing towards Z. So that is Z. If we have a vector ABC, then the way to sketch it is that you move A units towards X, and let us say this is my A units towards X and B units towards Y, I'm assuming them to be positive for the time being. So you use B units towards Y and you reach this place. And C units up towards Z in the direction of Z. So let's hit that. So that kind of gives us a position of vector U. So a line which joins origin to this point gives the vector u. So that is our vector u. Now we can always find magnitude of this vector by saying a square plus b square plus c square square root, right? Since its tail is at origin, therefore, we straight away get the magnitude by squaring, adding them up and square root. Now this vector could be given direction with reference to y-axis, z-axis and x axis all three so that is how actually we give direction to our vector and we call them cosines reason is simple reason is let's say that we are you can see here very clearly this is my vector if i drop a perpendicular to y axis then that angle Let's say that is one of the direction with y-axis which it makes. And my vector is u for the time being. Then the component of the vector along this will be u cos of this angle. Do you see that? So if I have to find the direction, I can find with the help of cosine. Do you see that? So that is the basic concept. I will use this and define our direction cosines just in a moment. Now, let me complete this part of sketching of our vector. So, another thing which we realized is where some students I find still having difficulty is to sketch this. So, when we complete this, we say this is x which is a units towards x, b units towards y. Let's complete this rectangle on xy plane. Got it? So we have a rectangle here and from every point we can go up C units that is along Z axis, right? So when you go up from here you come to this point we can join it. I'm trying to join and similarly we'll go up from here, right? And we will join it. Similarly we'll draw this parallel figure right there and join. So we make a rectangular box. Now I think you can appreciate 3D effect. Do you see that? So that is our vector which is vector U ABC. The purpose of making this rectangular box there is to show you the 3D effect. Now when we have to give directions to this vector then we are referring to its angle with x, so let me say with x which is let's say this angle with x we call this angle alpha 
with y that angle we call this beta and the angle with z we call this angle gamma so these three angles are the direction angles for our given vector right and these angles are called alpha beta and gamma direction cosine is cosine of these angles so cosine of these angles will give direction cosines correct let me summarize this here so what we have done so far is we consider a vector u which has these components a b and c remember these are called components of your vector right so these are components this is early stages let's get used to the terms so a b c are components right in our context we also call them direction numbers so at times a problem may say direction numbers for the vector are 1 2 3 it means the vector is defined and this position is 1 2 3 1 2 3 a b c values do you understand so the components of our vector are also referred to as direction numbers remember that now direction angles of a vector u any general vector are the angles alpha beta and gamma that the vector makes with the positive x y and z axis respectively correct as i have shown you here and note alpha beta and gamma we are taking less than 180 degrees right you could go to z from the other side also but we'll consider angles only between 0 to 180 degrees so that's direction angles so that give you vectors direction with reference to the axis the direction cosines of a vector are the cosines of direction angles alpha beta and gamma where cos alpha is magnitude of vector vector divided by the magnitude of vector so the direction cosines of the vector are the cosines of direction angle alpha beta and gamma where cos of alpha is equal to direction number a a divided by the magnitude of the vector cos beta is b divided by magnitude of vector and cos gamma is c divided by magnitude of vector so i can show you how it works so this is let's take this diagram rather the component which i'm drawing this is my vector u right and i'll try to use similar kind of colors this is my y-axis correct and i drop a perpendicular from my vector u to y-axis correct so as you can see here this is my vector u right and that is my y-axis so i'm just reproducing this part here and the angle which the vector makes with y-axis is beta now the length of the vector is the magnitude of the vector is it okay length is magnitude of the vector and how much is this distance we moved that was a and this unit was b correct when a b and c are the components of your vector a is this we moved a units towards x b towards y so length from here to here is b correct so what is cos of beta we have cos of beta is equals to adjacent over hypotenuse b over magnitude of vector u do you get it so we get this formula simple easy correct same thing what you can do is now consider a right angle from here to z axis now take this triangle do you understand this triangle think we just drop a perpendicular there in that case adjacent side will be along z and how much did we move along z so actually speaking how much did we move along z was c do you see that so therefore we can write down cos of gamma the angle which you make is equals to c over magnitude of vector which is this 
same is the case with x-axis correct now x-axis we have to see less than 180 degrees so I'll rather move it on this side do you see that and then that angle we will measure correct and if you drop a perpendicular there on x-axis you know this will be same distance on the other side which is a for us correct so cos of alpha will be equals to a the direction number the respective direction number over the magnitude of our vector so that is how we find direction cosines of a vector do you understand and you'll soon learn that actually speaking if we do cos square of these and add them up what do we get we get cos square alpha plus cos square beta plus cos square gamma what do we get in the numerator you get a square plus b square plus c square and in the denominator so in the numerator you'll get a square plus b square plus c square and in the denominator you will get magnitude of your vector square as you know what is a square plus b square plus c square it is the square of magnitude right what is the magnitude of this vector you'll find a square plus b square plus c square square root so square will give you square of the magnitude and this is always equal to 1 do you get my point so for any vector which is given as a b c with the components a b c are called the direction numbers angles alpha beta and gamma are the vectors angles with the x y and z axis respectively direction cosines are the direction pointing for the vector and so direction cosines of a vector are the cosines of the direction angles alpha beta and gamma which can be calculated by dividing component by its magnitude of the vector so a over magnitude gives you direction and square of your direction cosines when added together is always one you can also prove that actually direction cosines give you unit vector in the direction of the vector so these are few things which we have learned here and we will explore in the coming video i hope you appreciate it thank you